Hello. Good morning. You see Goose there? Say hi, Goose. I don't know if you can see her. She's just stretching. Yeah, you can see her, right? Eh? Here, let me make this bigger. Hi, Goose. Uh, let's see here. How many people do we have? We've got four people. So we'll just wait till a few more people arrive. We'll just look at Goose. Say hi, little Goosey. Say hi. Kima is just right. She's got a little... This is a... Um, a little cat cave that um, my mom made. We have another one that's a little bit further into that uh, fireplace. Don't worry, it's not a functional fireplace. Uh, and that's where Kima likes to, to relax and hang out and that kind of thing. I have this glove. I don't know. It's, uh, it kind of helps when you're writing on a glass surface to so that your hand doesn't like rub against here because it, it one thing that I didn't really anticipate from using an iPad all day is that it gets hot because there's a big battery in here right it's like a something like a I think it's like a 25,000 milliamp battery huge battery and it takes a lot of processing power to use the pencil um, so it gets hot and it's really uncomfortable if you're using this all day, right? Like if it's just uh, 10 or 15 minutes or something, it's fine. But when you're using it all day, by the end of the day, your hand is all sweaty and you're just like, like uh, rubbing the sweaty hand across a piece of glass. If you do that for four hours in a day, it's very uncomfortable. So I got this glove and it really helps because it uh, and it, it's still like you can still I mean if you wanted to it, it still works to like move I don't know you, you, oh, you can't even really see that but yeah see you can you can still move the glass uh, or sort of like it's still touch sensitive um, uh, which is nice uh, but uh, it, at least I'm not rubbing my sweaty palm uh, against the glass okay we got nine people here we can probably make me a little smaller now that's better and let's see so yesterday i was away uh i had something i had to take care of kind of a last minute thing sorry about that and thanks for being understanding um day before that looks like we had 15 people uh do the exit slip so that's not bad i think we have 20 something students so that's about 75%. Uh, could be a little better, but um, yeah. Okay. Um, ba -dum -ba -dum. Okay, let's see here. Okay, we got OBS working. Uh, what else am I looking for? Uh, yes, students. How many students do we have now? 10 people. Okay, that's good enough to get started. Um, okay. So uh, we're gonna we're gonna sort of jump into a new topic today. So we're we're more or less finished with radicals. So I'm gonna post an assignment sometime this week, uh, and 
The assignment is going to cover things from radicals, it's going to cover things from quadratics, it's going to cover things from sequences and series. So, excuse me, be prepared to, uh, you know, to draw off of previous topics. I really don't want us to forget about those topics. It's important that we kind of recycle those ideas. I've heard the hiccups, excuse me. Um, yeah, so um, what we're going to do today is we're going to do a review of a topic that uh, you would have done um, in uh, grade nine. And maybe again, I think a lot of you, if not all of you, did uh, grade 10 uh, pre-calc or uh, grade 10 intro to applied pre-calc uh, last semester. So this should be a bit of a review, um, but then we're going to sort of put a twist on it and make it a little more challenging. Um, but for the first part, it's going to, it's going to be a bit of a review and I think it's, it's going to be, I think it's going to be fun. Um, I really like this stuff and I, and I did it with, uh, with my grade nines, uh, about a week ago. Um, and, uh, it was actually a review for them. So I'm assuming it'll be a review for you too. But if, if not, if it's not a review, don't sweat. That's we're doing it. So, um, yeah. Uh, and here's Goose. She really wants to take a nap on my iPad. I was telling you this thing gets warm. I think she really likes it. I don't think you can see her right now, but um, yeah, she really likes to take a little nap right on my iPad because it's nice and hot. And also it means that, oh, yeah, yeah. what have I done here? Oh shoot, uh-oh. This is like a really big and heavy monitor and my my webcam is a part of the actual monitor. I shouldn't move it like that, but I had, I just had to show you Goose. I just had to, I didn't have a choice. But yeah, she gets, she really likes that. It's, it's like a little hot pad and she likes to take a nap on it. And then it means that I stop doing my work and pay attention to her. She's got her butt sticking right up in the air here. Goose, you're a very strange cat. Very, very strange. Okay. Now, of course, she's purring and I'm completely distracted. As far as she's concerned, this is mission accomplished. She won. And now she's messing up my iPad and eating my pencil. And yeah, great time for being a cat these days, isn't it? Okay, Goosey. Okay, how about you go on my shoulders and show everyone how good you are at balancing? No, you don't want to. Okay. 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 You got it. You got to go. You got to go. Bye bye. Okay, grade 10 advanced. Okay, here we go. This is what I was doing with my grade nines. You're doing number systems. Isn't that fun stuff? Oh, I love number systems. Okay. Um, but I'm dumb. Uh, excuse me, one second. Okay. Okie dokie. So what is this big thing that we're gonna do some review on? Uh, well, that is systems of equations, systems of equations. So systems of equations, okay? So this is going to be like our topic for the next uh, next week or two, or maybe even three, depending on how much time we want to uh, spend with it. Um, now this it's a big topic, and this is a this is something that that uh, you can keep talking about and keep 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 talking about. Um, you can eventually um, take this so far as to go into something like this linear algebra so 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 this is like the very beginning of this topic called linear algebra this is a this is a a, a, a fantastic uh topic of math i think i may have mentioned it before i have got several books uh on on linear algebra i used to teach this at the university of winnipeg one of my favorite topics of all time uh linear algebra so this is like the very beginning of linear algebra um is systems of equations and especially especially if we start talking about um, systems systems of linear equations linear equations uh, okay so systems of linear equations and this is the review okay the review so let's talk about what what all of these words mean okay so linear equations, let's first talk about that. So these are 
these are equations that represent represent straight lines straight lines eg y equals mx plus b right that would be a uh, an example of an equation. This is an equation that represents a straight line, right? Like y equals mx plus b. I mean, that's very general, right? It's a, that's a general uh, equation. Uh, you could have like y equals two thirds of x plus seven, right? So a linear equation is just an equation that uh, that represents a straight line. And the, the gist of it, the gist is that there are no exponents no exponents on the variables and that includes like fractional exponents so in other words like there's no square roots or any kind of roots on the on the on the variables either okay so that's what a linear equation is right it's, it's an equation that represents a straight line and the way we know that it's in the, that, that 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 equation really does represent a straight line is that there are no exponents on the variables. Okay, so that's that. Um, what is a system? A system, hmm. A system is many equations that share the same variables. Okay. So it's a uh, so a system is a, a group of equations that share the same variables. Okay, so we've got we've got kind of these these two things going on here. We've got a system which is just a whole group of equations that share variables, and then if we have um, linear equations, those all have no variables. So if you have a system of linear equations, that's a whole bunch of linear equations that all share the same variable. So typically, um, so typically, typically, we have, I guess I don't need colons there. Typically we have two linear equations, linear equations with two variables x and y okay that's that's what we see like 99 percent of the time especially in in this grade now if i were to open up this book right here and what we would eventually do in algebra uh like in an algebra course uh, like in university is you would have and i guess i don't this is more of an advanced book i don't think i have any of my earlier books maybe this one i guess i don't really need to show you but um i like uh, sometimes i like just you know showing you what what things look like when you when you study this in university because i think a lot of you do actually plan on going to university so it's it's a good idea just kind of have a, a quick peek as to what you do in university N i never got to see that when i was in high school i had no idea what we did in university uh, honestly i thought that university was like you just write papers. I didn't even I didn't even consider what you do in kind of like a sciencey math uh, uh, setting in university. Ironically, all of my books are at school. Like all of my good books are at school. And I was at school the other day uh, to pick some stuff up. And of all the classes that they're redoing the floors, they were re redoing my floors. So my whole classroom was empty and all my stuff was sort of scattered throughout the hallway. Um, so I did, I mean, and that's, that's, that they're everything. I'm not, I'm not upset about that. I'm, I get, I get new floors next year. So that's great. But I couldn't find any of my books. So I was going to take some of my books home. Anyway, in linear algebra, typically, like in university, what you would have is you would have n equations n equations and m variables variables so you can have as many equations as you want you can have as many variables as you want as well and that's what linear algebra is as long as all of those are linear equations so what we're going to do today 
is we are going to look at some systems of linear equations and our linear equations will have two variables x and y and we will have two equations okay so let's look at different possibilities so um so really i mean what we're what we're trying to do here is our goal our goal is to solve systems of linear equations okay so let's let's sort of take a look at, at kind of the big picture here okay so I want to I want to just paint a big picture and then we'll start looking at, at details okay so uh, when we start learning about algebra we have uh, one equation we have one equation and one variable right if I gave you a single equation and I gave you a single variable then you would say okay well um, I'll solve it right so let's well, I'll give you one how about 2x equals uh, 6 right whatever you can solve it right so basically what we're asking is what value can my variable take on what var value can my variable take on to make this single equation true okay well x equals 3 x equals 3 right because 2 uh, is, is our is our solution so our solution our solution is this and it's be it and it's 3 because 2 times 3 equals 6 right so that's what that's what I, I I'm talking about when I'm talking about a solution right a solution to a an equation is a value that our variable can take to make this single equation true right and in fact it's the only in this case it's the only solution that works so um, later like even as late as this year we've been we've been doing some of this we will have one equation we'll have one equation right but we'll have two variables okay right we've seen this I've I, we've we have we seen many of these equations right where we have two variables um, so something like this let's try hmm. okay let's try this one let's do maybe uh, uh, y equals um, 2 or I'll do 1 half 1 half x plus 1 okay does this have a solution really hey eh? it doesn't really have a solution um, well in the world of systems in the world of systems do we have a solution do we have a solution well not really not not really a solution and goose is sneaking back I wish you could I wish you could see her right now she's being a little sneak Okay, Goose, yeah, I love you so much, but but I'm trying to get some work done here. Okay, oh my gosh. Uh, cat paws are just as conductive as human fingers. So she has no hesitation on uh, pressing buttons on the... I, okay, Goosey, okay, okay, yeah, yeah. You're very sweet, and I love you so much. But I'm busy right now, I'm busy. Yeah, and she's purring, oh. See, what would I do about you? Okay, so there's not really a solution to this, right? There's no solution, but we can graph it. We can graph it. Okay, so really what we're doing with, with uh, a graphing is we are looking at the relationship between the variables, right? We're looking at the relationship between x and y. Okay, so that's that's what we're doing when we're graphing this. So if I were to graph this, right, I would say, okay, well, uh, you know, we've done this sort of thing. So here's my y-intercept, and then my slope is one half, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So this is this is this is the graph of y equals one half x plus one. Now, observe. If I take any point on this line. Let's say I take this point right here, which is the point, uh, what is that, 2, 2. This says when x equals 2, y equals 2. This is a solution. 
in, in, a, in a lot of ways, this is a solution. So one solution, one solution, who's to go away? One solution, okay, okay, yeah, you're sweet, you're cute, I love you. All right, okay, one solution is, uh, uh, so, ooh, oh, come on. One solution is xy is equal to 2, 2. In other words, if x equals 2, y equals 2. So if x equals 2, y equals 2. And is that true? It, okay, so let's try it. So 2 equals 1 half of 2 plus 1. Well, 2 equals 1 plus 1. Yeah, 2 equals 2. Yes. So any one of these points is a solution to this equation. So it doesn't matter which point I choose. So any point, any point on this line, any point, any point on this line, this line is a solution to y equals one half x plus one, right? That's that. Oh, and you can't see that because it's behind my head. But yeah, that's that's really what we're what we're talking about. So, in a lot of ways, therefore, I'm going to say therefore, we have uh, an infinite, or I should say, unlimited, unlimited number of solutions right because because x can be anything but when x is a when you when you narrow it down to a specific value of x then y becomes a specific value as well right so you can think of like okay yeah sure any and like x can be anything right we have uh like our domain the domain is unlimited it's it's all of the real numbers so x can be anything but when i when i narrow it down to x when i say okay well i want x to be in this case 2 y must be must be this value, y must be two as well. And it's not like they're always gonna be the same. Maybe two is a bad choice. But you know, like if, if x was zero, y is one, right? So in a lot of ways you can think of, of this one equation, two variables, as having an infinite number of solutions. Okay? Whereas if we have one equation, one variable, we have a single solution, provided everything works out. Sometimes you have no solutions. Uh, if you have one equation and two variables, then you, in, uh, as long as everything works out, you have an infinite number of solutions. Now, if we have two, two equations, we have two equations and two variables, let's talk about what could happen here. Okay, what, what are the possibilities? Okay, well, when we graph it, let's 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 graph. Okay, I'm going to give you a, uh, a a system that has two equations and two variables. Okay, I'm going to give you y equals uh, one half x plus one, and then I'm going to give you y equals negative one half x minus one. Okay, really similar equations. I just want something that's easy to graph. Okay. So let's graph both of these, and we'll graph them on the same graph. And you know what? I am going to be super fancy, and I'll do this in Desmos so we can be very precise about it. Okay, so I'm just going to plug my keyboard and mouse into my iPad. And now, what the heck? Oh, um, excuse me for one second. Let me just, I messed that up. There we go. Come on. There we go. Okay. So yes, now my mouse is connected to my iPad, and I can. Yeah, here's Desmos. Here we go. Okay. So what was the first one? And I think that you can't see that top line. So let me let me punch it into the second line. So I've got one half x. Oops. One half times x plus. One, so that's that's my first one. And I'll, I'll just just for the sake of it, I'll say y equals that. Good. Okay. So that's that one. And the other one is y equals negative one half x plus oh minus my, oh, come on minus one. Yeah. Okay. And look at that. There is their point of intersection. Okay. That is the solution to the system. 
So the solution is negative two comma zero. Okay, so the solution, the solution is x, y equals negative two, zero. What does that mean? What does that mean? So, well, so what does this mean? Well, uh, the combination, the combination of these two variables, these two variables works in both equations. Okay, I'm not sure why I use the word combination. I'm gonna, excuse me, not a combination. Uh, goose, it's changing the size of my eraser. Okay, um, so what does this mean? The values, the, the values of, the values of these two variables works in both equations. So that means that if I, if I take the, the value negative two zero and I put it into the first equation, y equals one half x plus one. If I were to say, okay, well, if x is equal to negative two, so I'll have negative two here plus one, and y is equal to zero, and I were to do the same thing in the other equation, so I've got y equals negative one half x minus one, that's supposed to be negative, and I punched in uh, z uh, negative two zero, so zero equals negative one half times negative two minus, uh, minus one. Well, if I punched both of these in, it would work in both equations. So zero is equal to one half times, well, one half times negative two is negative one, and, and I would have plus one. So yeah, zero equals zero, check. And in this case, the same thing. I've got zero equals, well, in this case, negative half times negative two is positive one, and then, yeah, zero is equal to zero, absolutely. So that's, that's what I mean when I say that this is a solution to the system, is that this, this, like these two values of the variables, they work in both equations. Not just one, but both of them at the same time. So I wanna talk a little bit about the different possibilities, because it doesn't always work out this way. It doesn't always work out, okay? So, so let's talk about when we have two equations, two variables, okay? What are the possibilities? What are the possibilities? Okay, let me just zoom in a little bit. So what are, the, what are the different possibilities when we have two equations and two variables? Well, I'm gonna take a, a, visual, a visual approach to this, okay? So let's, let's look at this visually. Okay, so um, a solution, so a solution to a system using a graph like we just did corresponds corresponds to the point or points I'll put the s in um, parentheses so the point or points of intersection okay so before going back to Desmos here before like this, this little intersection point right here, that corresponds to that corresponds to the intersection because all all of the points on this green line are solutions to this equation, right? I could choose any point on this line, and that would that those two values would make that green equation true, right? The second equation true, and similarly, oops, similarly. I could put, choose any point on this blue line and that would satisfy the blue equation, the first equation. Now this point right here, this point of intersection, is where they are, th th that, that these values satisfy both equations, right? So in a lot of ways, we can think of the, the, the intersection points as the solution 
to a system of linear equations or a system of any kind of equations for that matter. Okay, so that's that's what's going on here. So let's take a look at a few different uh, scenarios. Okay, so in fact, I'm going to I'm going to do three different scenarios. So here's one graph. Okay. Here is another graph, and let me actually make straight lines here. So here's here's one graph, and we don't need the whole um, Cartesian plane. We just need a, a quadrant, that'll do. So here's another graph, and here is a third graph. And we're gonna look at different scenarios. Okay, so best case scenario, we have one, we have one intersection point, okay? So, that intersection point here would be right there. Oops, I'm gonna do that and, okay. So there is our intersection, okay. So uh, scenario one, scenario one is that we have uh, one intersection point, intersection point, okay. Uh, and this corresponds to one solution, okay? Because there's only one point on the whole Cartesian plane that satisfies both of those equations, okay? That's what that intersection point means. Okay, now let's look at another scenario. So let's say I've got this line here, and then I've got this line here, okay? Now, I'm going to draw these little arrows here like this to demonstrate that these are parallel lines, okay? Oops. So I want to talk about uh, scenario two. Scenario two, okay? We have no intersection with parallel lines parallel, oops, 1L uh, lines, okay? Um, so if there's no intersection, that means no solution. There's no way we can satisfy both of those equations at the same time, right? It's impossible. Because if we could satisfy uh, both equations at the same time, then that would require um, some kind of intersection because we would want that point to be on both lines. That's what it means to satisfy that equation is to be able to find a point on that line. But if both of those lines have a gap between them and there's no point where they, they intersect, uh, that's what it means to be parallel lines. Parallel lines never meet, okay? So if since parallel lines never meet, there's no intersection uh, on, on these two lines, which means that there's no solution. And finally, the last scenario is if I were to have, okay, here's one line. Oops, I was using red. Here's one line. There it is. And then if, I mean, it's kind of hard to draw this. I mean, it's actually impossible to draw this, but maybe you can kind of see what's going on here. I've got basically, well, not basically, actually this, oops, the same line, the same line drawn twice, okay? So this is scenario three, scenario three. We have um, the same line, same line drawn twice, okay? So if we, if we draw the same line twice, oh, and you can't see that, let me, let me do this. So if we draw the same line twice, what happens? What does that look like? Well, that means that we have an infinite number of intersection points, intersection points, right? Any point on either line is gonna be on the other one. So they intersect on infinitely many um, points. So there's an infinite number of intersection points and therefore an infinite, infinite number of solutions, okay? That's what that means, hi Nigel. Okay, so that's, that's what that means. So um, when we have two equations and two variables, what are the possibilities? There are three possibilities in total. The first possibility is, and, that's the, and the first one is kind of the one that we usually want, 
that's like best case scenario, is when there's one intersection point, one solution. It's, much, it's so nice when you just have one solution, right? The second scenario is um, uh, no intersection, uh, and that means that there's no solutions. And then the third scenario is when you have the same line drawn twice. So, I mean, I just want to give you a quick example of, of what I'm talking about. Like maybe, maybe one line is y equals one half x plus one. And maybe the other line is like two y is equal to x plus two. Okay. If you, if I were to give you both of those equations, you would quickly find out that they're the same. Right, but who knows? Maybe you could be given two of these equations. They look different, right? They have a different form, but at, like in in their core, they are the same, right? So so that's a perfectly good scenario where you could have infinitely many solutions, um, right? So um, I guess we're kind of running out of time here. Uh, so what I'm going to do? I'm going to just quickly give you an exit slip. So your exit slip for the day is the following. So exit slip is, um, okay, so find the number of solutions and then what I mean by that is i.e. one solution, zero solutions, or infinitely many solutions, oops, solutions of the following system. Following system. Okay, okay, let me get this system out. I, oops, now my mouse is not connected to my computer. Excuse me. There we go. Okay, back up. Okay, here we go. Okay, I just want the number of solutions here. Uh, nothing more, nothing less. Okay, so you don't, yeah, and you don't have to solve this. So, like, caution. Caution. Do not solve. Um, I just want the number of solutions. Okay, so don't, don't solve it. I mean, maybe you can't even solve, right? Maybe there's no solution. I just want the number of solutions. Is there one solution? Are there zero solutions? Or are there infinitely many solutions? So uh, the system is the following. I've got y equals uh, negative 3 eighths, negative 3 eighths x plus 6 plus 6. And the other one is 8y equals negative 3x minus 1, okay? Um, or sorry, minus, sorry, that's not what, I, what it was, minus uh, 64, okay? So uh, I've got 8y equals negative 3x minus 64 is one of them, and I've got y equals negative 3 eighths x plus 6. Tell me, how many solutions do we have? Do we have one solution? So the only the only possible uh, answer that I want you to punch into that form is one solution. So that's that's one possibility. Uh, uh, no solutions. No solutions. Okay. No solutions. Okay. Let me make this box better. There we go. Okay. One solution. No solutions. Or infinitely many solutions come on right nicely so solutions okay those are the only things that I would like you to punch into that form don't solve it I mean maybe you can't even solve it who knows um, but uh, yeah so punch in one of those three and tell me how many solutions are there and uh, yeah, that's where we're gonna leave it for today. So um, I'm gonna sign out and I will talk to you guys tomorrow. Tomorrow we'll kind of do a little, we'll, we'll get our hands a little bit dirtier. I just kind of wanted to do sort of like a, an overview of, of what to expect. So um, what we're gonna do in, in this sort of, uh, like over the next couple of weeks is we're not just going to look at linear 
uh, systems, we're going to look at nonlinear systems and, and kind of investigate what that looks like. And we may, depending on how much time we have, we I might try to squeeze in some stuff with uh, matrix and matrices and, and how that, that all fits into this big picture. So that's what we're going to do uh, tomorrow is we're going to start getting our hands dirtier and hopefully by the end of the week we'll start looking at some non-linear systems. Okay, so there's your exit slip. Um, be well. Uh, I miss you guys terribly. I wish I could see your face, um, but I can't. Uh, I will talk to you tomorrow. Bye-bye.